Remember when the support of evangelical Christians was contingent on a candidate's willingness to grovel before Bibi Netanyahu? Poor Rand Paul, for example, the alleged anti-interventionist isolationist and fellow libertarian, uh, had to travel all the way to Israel, cuddle up to the Israeli right wing, and pointedly ignore the Palestinians, whom he didn't even dine to visit. And where did it get him? Just amused disdain from the Jewish Republican coalition and a series of televised ads from a dark money pro-Israel group attacking him for his trouble. Appeasement, it seems, doesn't work when it comes to dealing with the Israel lobby. The supposed in invincibility of the Israel lobby has been a long time unraveling. But the process began a couple of years ago with their first big defeat over the nomination of Chuck Hagel as defense secretary. Senator Cruz, in particular, took center stage during this seminal battle, during his imitation of, doing his imitation of Joe McCarthy in impugning Hegel's integrity and accusing his supporters of being, quote, friends of Hamas, whatever that may mean. It didn't work, and the Obama administration grew bolder, taking the initiative in defying the lobby and becoming more vocal in its criticism. The Israel lobby is very concerned about Trump. The neoconservatives who direct it are vehemently opposed to him because he challenges the very basis of America's interventionist foreign policy, which they have supported on ideological grounds as well as its obvious benefits to Israel. Trump's statement that the U.S. was deliberately lied into the Iraq war has enraged them to the point that neocon chief strategist Bill Kristol has called for a third party candidate to oppose him. Neocon Max Boot has said he'd vote for Stalin before voting for, for 